Okay, thank you very much um, to the organizers for organizing this very interesting meeting. Um, I think elastic tuning of materials is turning out to be a really uh, exciting area of research. So this presentation is about quantum phase transitions and superconductivity in ferroelectric materials. And before I continue, I'd like to thank um, my close collaborators that worked on this project, especially Gil Lonserich in Cambridge, um, Carsten and Jaime, who worked in Cambridge and Rio, Brazil, Jason Lashley from Los Alamos National Lab, and Jim Scott from St. Andrews. And the work here was done in Cambridge and in CBBF in Rio. <clears throat> so talking about ferroelectrics, I'm referring to displacive ferroelectrics where you have a, an, an ionic, ionic displacement in the lattice, so it's a, a physical displacement such as we have here in the example of lead titanate, where a positive ion um, displaces in the unit cell. Inversion symmetry is broken below TC and it's driven by a soft transverse optical phonon mode as you can see here. So as you cool down, the frequency of this ion oscillating in the unit cell drops to zero at TC. And these modes disperse, um, as shown here, with a gap above TC. And then the optical gap closes at the, at the critical point, resulting in linearly dispersing optical phonon modes. And the, the great thing about ferroelectrics is because they, they um, it's related to a physical displacement of the atom in the lattice, then strain and pressure is a very strong tuning parameter. So it really, really strongly affects the properties. And also electric field is also a very strong tuning parameter because these are electrical dipoles. So using fields and strain really works very well in such materials. So here, um, I'm showing some examples that diverse ferroelectrics can be tuned to quantum phase transitions. So the example here is a perovskite oxide, barium titanate, where around 65 kilobars of pressure is enough to tune TC all the way to zero. There are also organic ferroelectrics, and this one is, shows the example of trisarcosine calcium chloride where chemical substitution X can tune TC down to a quantum phase transition. What are all the other ones in the phase diagram? This one on the left? Yeah. So at high temperatures, it's a cubic structure. And then a, a polarization develops here, and the crystal undergoes a tetragonal distortion. Uh -huh. And the polarization points in the 0, 0, 1 direction. And then it just has a, a few other structural phase transitions here, orthorhombic and rhombohedral, where the direction of the polarization switches first from up to the side and then to the corner. So this the first transition is believed to be second order in this part of the phase diagram, but these ones are first order. So here's an, a completely different type of ferroelectric, a so-called electronic or charge transfer material. In the paraelectric phase, there are no ions, as it were. They're more like neutral atoms. But in the ferroelectric phase, electrons are transferred from one atom to another, producing ions. And, and that results in a, a ferroelectric state here. That can also be tuned to a quantum phase transition with pressure in this case. Uh, this one is, a, is an interesting example of strontium titanate, where simply replacing the oxygen 16 with oxygen 18, so just putting a couple of extra neutrons in the nucleus, drives the material from a paraelectric to a ferroelectric. And that itself can be tuned back to absolute zero using isotope substitution. It's also possible to have so-called metallic fer ferroelectrics. And by this, we just mean that the, the electron carrier density is too small to completely screen the, the dipole in the unit cell. 
So you wouldn't be able to measure a microscopic polarization, but inside the lattice, there's, there are still dipoles. Uh, and in this case, pressure again is tuning this metallic ferroelectric down towards absolute zero. And then finally, there's uh, the case of a so-called quantum dipole glass or relaxer material, where it's not, not a, um, an equilibrium phase transition, but there are sort of a glass type transition which is highly frequency dependent. And by tuning the frequency or chemical composition, you can also tune uh, the, the glass transition temperature towards zero. So what's different and, interest, and interesting about ferroelectric quantum crit criticality? Well, it's a new quantum liquid to explore where quantum criticality arises purely from the solid state lattice, not from the electron system. And there's few, few systems investigated to date. Um, quantum critical fluctuations are often observed up to quite high temperatures in the case of strontium titanate around 50 Kelvin, which is often quite a bit higher than in, in many magnetic systems. Um, the presence of long-range dipole-dipole interactions and strong coupling to other order parameters and anisotropy leads to quite a rich quantum action and a rich phase diagram. Um, and then they find applications in advanced devices um, as the properties are very highly sensitive to electric fields and strains. And finally, you can dope or inject charge carriers into ferroelectrics and they experience strong electron interactions. <coughs> so this is just summarizing some of the possibilities that we've seen in, in these kinds of systems. So in the, in, if you're in this part of the phase diagram, we observe these quantum critical exponents where the inverse susceptibility goes as T squared in a multi-axial material, or the uniaxial susceptibility goes as T cubed here. Uh, it's also, we find that there's an opportunity to find materials with a large um, electrocaloric effect in this part of the phase diagram. Um, in the cases where you can inject um, electrons, we find superconductivity here. And finally, you can also find these polarization textures. Sorry. Uh, Go ahead. This isn't this first order transition. It seems to be opposite of what you're saying that it was a continuous transition. Yeah, it depends on the material. So this is just in general. So. What is field? Is field magnetic field? This would be the electric field. And this would be pressure. So sometimes this point is below zero, and then it's second order all the way to absolute zero. And sometimes it's above, and then you have a first order region. So this is the kind of model that we use to describe these systems. So we have a quartic field theory here in the polarization gradient term, but of importance here is the dipole interaction and this term here, which is coupling to strain. So this is the electrostrictive coupling. This turns out to be important in, in many ferroelectrics. So even if this spontaneous strain is zero or you're not, a, you're not applying a stress to the material or there's no spontaneous strain, the fluctuating strain due to quantum and thermal fluctuations can strongly affect the properties and the phase diagram. So this is what we found in, in the case of strontium titanate. Here you have a ferroelectricity tuned to zero. And then there's a crossover line here, Tx, between a, a gapped quantum power electric state and a quantum critical state. It's in here where we see the inverse susceptibility going as T squared. And then there's another line here which shows up as a peak in the susceptibility at low temperatures. And this peak um, follows this uh, square root dependence here of the tuning parameter. <clears throat> and the peak is, it arises due to this coupling to strain here. So when you integrate out the fluctuations in the strain and see what happens in these electric susceptibility, it gives you a peak. So the 
the acoustic phonons sort of take on a polar nature because they're mixed with the optical di dipolar fluctuations. So, uh, as you say, right, there's an acoustic phonon, you, so you're coupling to a massless object in some way. Uh, and what is surprising is that it's only relevant when you're away from the critical point. It doesn't seem to matter at the critical point. Is there something one can understand? Um, <clears throat> well, it probably does matter at the critical point, but this line is simply showing the position of the peak in the dielectric constant on the power electric side. So the peak goes to zero at, at the critical point. But the coupling term itself will affect the entire phase diagram. And it can also lead to a first order phase, uh, uh, transition boundary here in some cases. And by the way, this, this coupling here is also believed to be able to drive the formation of textures in the polarization, like vortices or skirmions. But this is, the, is, a, is a measured phase diagram, and it's also calculated from a model without any adjustable parameters. So just to give you, just to show you something, like how the data looks, this is the inverse susceptibility measured against plotted against t squared from the measurement, and you can see a very nice straight line close to the quantum critical point here, which is very different from the classical Curie-Weiss result. This is the minimum in the inverse susceptibility. That's what I was telling you about before, the peak and the dielectric constant. And here we show that the Gruneisen ratio which is the linear thermal expansion coefficient divided by the heat capacity diverges as 1 over t squared close to a ferroelectric quantum critical point, which is very different for other insulating materials away from criticality. So this was just my earlier question. So the susceptibility inverse going like t squared is what you would expect for a 3 plus 1 dimensional a quantumizing problem or yeah, yeah that, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you do couple to these acoustic phonons, yeah. but they do not change that behavior at all. So a little bit away from criticality on the power electric side, they have the, there's a there's a minimum right. here. So that but shows up down here. Point, it doesn't matter. As far as far as we know, we haven't been. It depends how close you get. So uh, okay. uh, uh, this proximity to the critical point, we don't see anything more so far. But you could, this result um, basically comes from doing the inverse procedure. How does the polarization affect the strain? So this is the quantum critical polarization fluctuations affecting the strain field. <clears throat> okay, so ferroelectrics, which are usually insulators, can be made metallic and can contain strongly correlated itinerant electrons. Here are some routes which you can use to metallize ferroelectrics. So for strontium titanate, you can um, chemically substitute niobium on the titanium site. This results in a, in a metallic phase. Barium titanate, one of the most famous ferroelectrics, room temperature ferroelectrics, you can heat, heat it in a vacuum up to very high temperatures and oxygen comes out and electrons, mobile electrons go into the lattice. You can also use ionic liquid gating of these materials. So this shows a potassium tantalate material in which charge carriers are, are, are injected into the structure. And also you can do interface engineering. So putting, two, putting a ferroelectric on a different material and you, you can get a metallic layer at the interface. This here shows the, the measured and calculated Fermi surface for metallic strontium titanate. So interestingly, some of these materials become superconductors at low temperature. So strontium titanate was the first of the oxide superconductors discovered in the 1960s. Um, it has a TC versus carrier density here, which has a dome-like structure and a maximum TC around half a Kelvin. 
here's the resistivity plotted against temperature showing three different doping levels. And here's the voltage gated potassium tantalate I showed on the last slide, where just dialing up the voltage on the instrument, you can tune it from insulator to metal to superconductor and back again. And it also seems to have a dome like structure. So the, volt, the gate voltage here is tuning the carrier density. So although TC is less than one, ke one Kelvin, the density of states in these materials is very small. They're in this range. It's been observed, I think, down to around 10 to the 17, 10 to the 18 carriers per cc. So that indicates that the, the density of states is very low and the interaction strength between the electrons must be incredibly strong. So the glue pairing the electrons is one of the strongest that we know about. If you could scale this density of states up to usual metallic densities, you would have much higher than a room temperature superconductor. Um, but yeah, understanding this kind of superconductivity has remained quite elusive since the 60s. So to, um, to try and understand this more, we decided to measure the pressure dependence of superconductivity, which was done here with a 50 millikelvin magnetic solid state refrigerator and a piston cylinder pressure cell. And here are the results. So we can see that TC, the superconducting TC here in strontium titanate is rapidly suppressed as pressure is applied. So just five kilobars is enough to, to completely um, suppress superconductivity. So any, any model explaining superconductivity in these materials must account for the, the dome in the carrier density and this high sensitivity to pressure, where seemingly the, the electronic bands are not changing very much over this range of pressures. So to try and, under, try and understand this more, we um, looked for the simplest, theory, simplest model of superconductivity that we could find that would account for these, um, this behavior. And I'll try and outline that here. So this, this is the interaction between two electrons added to the, the strontium titanate lattice. And here it depends on the dielectric function, epsilon, of Q and omega. This is given by, um, this dielectric function is given by a sum of these terms, where this one is due to the ionic system. So omega Q here is the is the transverse optical phonons. They're the ones that are responsible for ferroelectricity. Omega P is the plasma frequency for the, for the ionic system. And chi EL here is the Linhard function. So that's the, the uh, contribution to the dielectric function coming from the electron system. Here is the same dispersion I showed you earlier for the soft transverse optic phonon modes, omega Q, which goes in here. And this is the gap which goes to zero at the ferroelectric critical point. So you can rewrite the dielectric function here, or the, the, the inverse dielectric function, one over epsilon. You can also write that as a sum of um, terms with these resonance frequencies, omega plus, and at omega minus, and gamma plus and minus are the coupling strengths. So this, this uh, is, is V of Q here, rewritten by rewriting this, as a, in, this in this form. So here we see, we, if we plot this interaction now versus frequency, instead of having the longitudinal optical modes and transverse optical modes, we've now got new resonances in this coupled itinerant electron phonon system. And those resonances are shown here as omega plus and omega minus. And these we call hybrid polar modes. So they're composites of the conduction electrons and the, uh, and the ions, phonons. 
if you take this picture and you tune the carrier density down to zero, you, uh, you, uh, you get back the transverse optical phonon mode and the longitudinal optical phonon mode. And you can see here that it may be advantageous to tune the TO modes towards zero as you go to a quantum critical point because you're opening up quite a large region of attraction here. So to estimate TC, or the propensity, or at least the susceptibility of the system to form a superconducting state, um, we solve a gap equation like this. And we need to find the kernel U here. And to do that, we estimate it using the um, ali Ashberg theory applied in the weak coupling limit, which is appropriate for strontium tightening. So in this limit, this the resulting kernel derived from the Ali-Ashberg equations is also known as the KMK kernel, which is given in this paper here. So U here is completely specified by the interaction V, but it has a very different form to V itself. So using this, this is the resulting um, phase diagram that we found. So the superconducting TC here, you can see is suppressed quite rapidly with pressure. TC max, the estimates for TC max here is around half a Kelvin, so it's giving the right order of magnitude. And we also recreate this dome of the TC versus carrier density. So you, this model seems to roughly account for the, the key properties of superconductivity in STO. So putting it together, the phase diagram may look something like this, um, where we see as, we, as you approach the quantum critical point in electron-doped strontium titanate, superconductivity seems to be enhanced in this region. So superconductivity can be mediated by these hybrid longitudinal polar modes which exists close to the ferroelectric quantum phase transition in electron-doped samples. But superconductivity is not mediated by the soft transverse ferroelectric critical mode. So it seems to be enhanced by going to the quantum critical point, but it's not actually pairing arising out of the critical modes. The, the attractive interaction is very strong in this system because essentially it's mediated by polar modes, incompletely screened, um, modes, which gives an interaction on the scale of the Coulomb energy. TC is so low because um, with such a low carrier density, the density of states is very low in this material. So, and the conduction, elect as you increase the carrier density, the conduction electrons screen out the interaction, which is producing pairing. But we think that TC may be possible to be increased by looking at materials on the border of finite wave vector um, dielectric instabilities such as antiferroelectrics or other materials, or by combine, combining with a different pairing interaction. And yeah, that's, that's my talk, so if you have any questions. Okay.